This is my official Yosuda bike review, and in the next few minutes, I'm gonna go through each of the 10 separate categories of the Tail Happy Score and rank this bike on a scale of zero to 100. And then at the end of this video, we'll see how the Yosuda bike stacks up and compares against other similarly priced indoor cycling bikes. Starting with the basics, I bought this Yosuda bike for $340 on Amazon.com and it normally is listed at $400. On the Amazon listing, the Yosuda flywheel weight is listed at 35 pounds, which I do have a link to this bike below this video in the description box if you want to check out the specs for yourself. The Yosuda bike is belt driven. However, it is not magnetic resistance. Instead, it has this felt pad for resistance. The pedals that come on the bike are dual sided. They have a cage on one side and on the other side, there is no clip in option. So if you want to get clip in pedals for this bike, you would have to upgrade and buy those separately. So let's dive straight into the first category of the tail happy score and that is drivetrain feel, which is just, you know, how does the drivetrain on the bike actually feel to ride? Like I mentioned before, the flywheel mass is listed at 35 pounds. However, um, this drivetrain is not the smoothest feeling drivetrain of the bikes I have compared. You know, it does have physical resistance, which it has a felt pad. The flywheel to me does feel kind of relatively light and like there's not a whole lot of inertia there compared to some of these other bikes with uh, bigger, more massive flywheels, uh, namely the Sunny bike that has a 49 pound flywheel. And you know, it's about the same price. This isn't a comparison video, but you know, the Sunny bike does have a more substantial flywheel mass to it. Additionally, in the same price point, the Gerodo bike over there is magnetic resistance and it has a pretty good flywheel. But jumping on back over here to the Yosuda because this is a Yosuda stationary indoor cycling bike review, the felt resistance pad on the Yosuda bike doesn't really give the smoothest uh, feedback. It kind of sends like a vibration through uh, the resistance knob and it's really just not the smoothest feeling drivetrain. Overall, for a drivetrain feel on the Yosuda, I'm gonna have to rank this bike four out of 10. However, let's move straight on to maximum resistance. You know, what is the maximum resistance of the bike? This is a really important feature to a lot of people for good reason. You know, you want a bike that has a good maximum resistance. And since this bike does have a physical resistance pad, of course, it does have a really high maximum resistance. You can really crank it up, just like you can on the Sunny bike that has a physical resistance pad. And the maximum resistance on the Yosuda bike is greater than the Peloton Bike Plus. However, I will say, as you crank up that maximum resistance, it just really doesn't feel that smooth compared to magnetic resistance. So, you know, you do get that high maximum resistance on the Yosuda, but as you really start cranking on the resistance, um, the, the, the way the pedals move on the bike, it just really doesn't feel great but you know that being said you can kill your legs on maximum resistance on the yosuda all you gotta do is crank that resistance up to max so since it doesn't really feel as smooth as magnetic resistance it doesn't feel as good in comparison to other bikes i've ranked on the tail happy score i'm gonna give the yosuda bike an 8 out of 10 for maximum resistance next is metrics what kind of metrics can you get on the bike and on the yosuda bike you don't get cadence, you don't get resistance feedback, and you don't get your power output. If you're finding value in this video, please give me a thumbs up, and any questions or comments you have, please leave down in the comment section below this video. So on the Tail Happy Score, the important metrics are considered to be resistance and cadence and power output, and this bike really just doesn't give you that. It gives you some basic stuff like speed, distance, calories, and odometer, and you can cycle through those with this one single button. However, you know, if you want your cadence, you can simply buy a Wahoo cadence sensor and you just take this little pod and basically just throw it on the crank right there of the arm and then pull up the app. The Wahoo cadence sensor also integrates with a lot of other apps. In terms of getting your resistance feedback, that's just really not gonna happen on a bike that has a physical resistance pad, so not on the Yosuda. Additionally, you're probably just not realistically gonna get your power output metrics. You could install some power pedals in theory on this bike. However, power pedals cost more than the bike itself. All things considered, I give the Yosuda a two out of 10 for metrics. Next on the tail happy score is features. What sort of features does the bike come with? Uh, so this is a pretty basic bare bones bike. It does have a little mini screen on there to give you a little bit of feedback. And there is actually this little 
tablet holder, despite it being like fairly flimsy and plasticky and kind of stabbing you, which I won't dock it for in this category, that will be in the quality category and comfort category, part of me. You can actually add your own tablet, so if you wanna do Peloton classes or any other sort of, you know, Apple Fitness Plus or follow a YouTube class, you can throw your phone on there sideways like this or you could also put it in the slot right here like this. And uh, obviously, you know, you could put a larger tablet right up here. This bike doesn't have digital magnetic resistance or magnetic resistance or not like a fancy knob or anything. You do get one single water bottle holder here on the Yosuda. The Yosuda bike earns a two out of 10 for features. The next category in the Tel score is adjustability. How much can you adjust the bike? First and foremost, this bike is three-way adjustable, meaning the handlebars do not have the ability to move forwards and backwards. They're locked into place in terms of going forwards and backwards, but you can move them up and down five different clicks. And there are holes you need to click into that are spaced relatively far apart compared to other bikes. On the seat post of the bike, you have the exact same thing with the hole spaced relatively far apart and you do have to click into a hole. The seat does move forwards and backwards, although not quite as much as you see on other bikes. However, I think it is enough to get the bike adjusted properly. For me personally, my major gripe with adjustability is the lack of ability to adjust the seat to fit my height of six foot five and I have a inseam length of 34 inches. Although I do believe that the Yosuda listing does have this bike listed as fitting somebody up to an inseam of 35. I just really don't get that leg extension that I need to for proper form on the Yosuda bike at six foot five. So right now the bike is on maximum seat height and I do think that the seat does need to be able to come up a little bit higher for me to get a proper seat adjustment on this bike. For reference, this is what the bike looks like on the minimum settings. The seat's all the way down and all the way forward. Handlebars are also all the way down. And I'll just go ahead and sit on it at my gigantic height of six foot five to show you what that looks like. So I do think that you could be pretty short and still be able to fit this bike just fine. If you're finding value in this video, please give me a thumbs up and any questions or comments you have, leave down in the comment section below this video. In the manual of the Yosuda bike, the maximum user weight is listed at 270 pounds, but right here there's a sticker that says 265 pound warning. The final thing I'd like to point out in terms of adjustability is up here on the front. Typically you just have one knob to adjust in order to adjust the stem height of the handlebars. However, on the Yosuda bike, there's actually a second piece over here that kind of looks like it was an afterthought. When I first built this bike, I actually forgot to put this knob on because it's not typically there. However, if you look closely, you can see it basically just kind of looks like it's a little bolt welded on there and it really just kind of secures the handlebars to keep them from moving. So initially, these handlebars had quite a bit of wobble and I couldn't figure out why but that little knob on the side, tightening it up, solved the problem. I give the Yosuda bike a five out of 10 on adjustability. The next category on the Tel Hippie score is comfort. And even though it looks like this bike was designed for comfort, it really doesn't perform so well. Starting up here at the handlebars, when you put your hand on this grip, which is basically the only like horizontal grip, uh, your hand kind of like stabs right into this little stabby piece right here. And uh, it is kind of painful. Obviously you could just remove this entire piece of plastic, but that does take away some of your functionality. The comfort category takes into account places you have contact with the bike, such as the handlebars, the seat, and the pedals, and being able to get into a comfortable riding position. So I really don't love the hand grip positions on the Yosuda bike, but you know, maybe this is like a personal preference thing, but there really is just that one small area in the front here that you can put your hand for the horizontal position. And then you kind of get these kind of weird shapes going out. Uh, these ones up here on the front are kind of nice and it can really help you get uh, stretched out when you're out of the saddle in position three. One thing that I feel like is appropriate to compare right now is uh, the material of these handlebars. It's kind of like a foam, whereas on all the other bikes I have, uh, they all have like a rubber coating and it's kind of a grippy, sticky rubber coating. Whereas uh, this is just kind of like a foam coating. Personally, I don't really love it, but um, you know, it's a personal preference thing. And um, I don't know, I just, I don't think it's as comfortable. If your hands get uh, sweaty, I could see it being a little bit slippery. The seat on the Yosuda bike is very interesting. I will say for starters, uh, you can see it's a very wide seat. Relative to most bikes, this is a very substantial seat. Um, it does have a cutout in it. Uh, but I don't love it. You know, I think, you know, they designed it for comfort, but um, 
you know, it's, look how like, look how much it rocks. So, you know, honestly being on this bike kind of makes me feel like I'm on a pogo stick a little bit, you know, just kind of bouncing around. Um, it's got these springs down here, which generally, you know, springs are designed to be like a suspension system. So, you know, if you're out riding down the street, you hit a pothole or some bumps, uh, they'll absorb the bump. So, you know, this kind of just gives a little bit excessive bounce and wiggle and wobble. Not my favorite seat, but you know, like I always say, don't listen to me on seat because everybody's gonna have their own preference and taste. Again, this is not meant to be a comparison video, but we're, I'm over here on the Gerardo X2, which also comes with a wide seat. This one, um, it feels nicer to me. Honestly, this feels like a better, uh, better designed seat for an indoor bike. There are some small springs on the bottom side of the Gerardo seat, but not nearly anything like you see on the Yosuda seat. The pedals that come on the Yosuda bike are a cage style on one side and no clip-in ability on the other side of the pedal. They have the steel teeth, small surface area to put your foot on, which for me in the past has kind of caused numbness in my toes for longer rides. However, uh, you know, it's about what you would expect for a cheaper, inexpensive bike. Last but certainly not least on the list of comfort is the resistance knob, which it's okay, you know, it's not my favorite. It's, um, you know, just a plasticky kind of material. It works. Um, again, over here on the Gerardo X2, I'd say this resistance knob is a little better. Another comparison for you, this is the Sunny Model B1002 resistance knob, physical resistance. Uh, it's better. However, at least you get a resistance knob on the Yosuda. This is the Proform bike, and it is simply a stop, not a resistance knob. And since I'm out doing comparisons, this is the resistance knob on the Peloton Bike Plus. I do like that the Yosuda bike does have these round adjustment knobs on the front. Also a round adjustment plastic knob on the back here by the seat and up here by the seat as well. Round similar to the Peloton Bike Plus for ease of adjustment. However, these are rubber coated and much nicer. In comparison, this is the adjustment knobs on the Gerodo and the adjustment knobs over here on the Sunny bike are probably a little bit nicer. Those are kind of just minor things on the comfort category. However, overall, you know, this bike isn't the most comfortable. I don't like how those uh, plastic things stab my hands up there and the seat's a little excessively squishy. It's not the most comfortable bike and overall I give this bike a four out of 10 on comfort. The next category on the Tally P score is style. You know, what does the bike look like? Do you like the look of it? This is really totally up to you. I'll tell you my opinion though. It's not my favorite looking bike. You know, it's got that kind of gray look to it. It's a glossy paint. The resistance knob looks kind of cheap. Um, I do kind of like that they went away from the traditional red on everything and did orange there. I really don't think the Yosuda bike is the best looking bike of the bunch to tell you the truth. I prefer more of a matte black looking bike like the Peloton Bike Plus, obviously much more expensive. But even in comparison, the Gerardo X2 I think is a better looking bike. I think the Sunny bike is a better looking bike. And these bikes are in the same price point that you can buy on Amazon as well. The flywheel up here in the front of the Yosuda is okay. You know, I like the look of the Gerodo flywheel actually better to tell you the truth. And the Sunny bike, I also like the flywheel on that one better than on the Yosuda. I give the Yosuda a four out of 10 for style. The next category on the Talipi score is convenience. How easy is it just to jump on the bike and start a ride? This also accounts for how easy it is to join an instructor-led class through a third-party app such as Peloton or Apple Fitness Plus or something like that, throwing your tablet on there. Do you need to hook up additional things to get your important metrics such as cadence and power and resistance? So yes, you do have a little bit of work to do on the Yosuda. If you just wanna hop on there and do an instructor-led class, you can just get on and not know your metrics and do a ride, no problem. Uh, you know, it's about as convenient as the rest of these bikes. An example of a really convenient bike would be the Peloton Bike Plus that has the screen attached to it and it has all your metrics. You just hop on, nothing to bring, everything's ready to go for you. Obviously, the Peloton Bike Plus is in a completely different price point and different category than a lot of these other bikes. All in all, I give the Yosuda a 5 out of 10 in convenience, which is pretty much on par with a lot of these other non-Peloton bikes. The next category is initial quality impressions. And this is really just like my initial impressions of the quality. Uh, right away, you know, we can take a look up here at the screen and see that it feels very uh, plasticky. The button here feels very uh, just mushy, uh, very cheap, flimsy uh, material here. However, this doesn't really account for long-term reliability and quality of this bike, just my initial impressions on quality. 
The resistance knob is um, a very plasticky kind of feel to it. Feels very cheap. And from what I've read on Amazon reviews, you can click the link below this video and check it out on Amazon for yourself. Uh, people seem to have reports of issues with the resistance knob going bad over time in which Yosuda has sent them a replacement resistance. The Yosuda bike does come with an extra resistance felt pad. So, you know, if the original one wears down, it looks like they give you an extra one to replace it. It does have some inexpensive, very plasticky feeling components. And as I mentioned before up here, it does have this like secondary afterthought appearing bolt kind of added on there for stability on the handlebar, which does kind of go to show that even though this is unusual, and if I am correct in my assumption about this being an afterthought or, you know, like a secondary follow-up product enhancement after the original, Yosuda is doing what they can to make improvements to the spike. So far, I haven't had any problems with the Yosuda bike, but if you have had this bike for a long time and you do have a long-term quality report of the Yosuda bike, please leave that down in the comment section below to share with everybody else. I just simply haven't had this bike for a long enough period of time to give it a true quality report, just my initial observations. So after building the bike and spending a little bit of time with it, I give it a five out of 10 on overall initial quality impressions. And that's really just relative to other bikes I've built and spent time on. The final category on the Tail Wipey score is value. And this one is a tough one. You know, it really just takes into account how much you pay for the bike and what you get. And are there any mandatory recurring fees? You know, Peloton bike, you buy that, you have to pay a mandatory $39 per month recurring fee. To get a pseudo bike, you don't pay any mandatory fee. However, you are free to use any sort of app you would like. You know, you can do the Peloton digital app for $12.99 a month or Apple Fitness Plus when that comes out soon. The value proposition considering you can buy this bike for just between $300 and $400 isn't really that bad. However, I am gonna have to take into consideration uh, some of these other bikes you can also buy on Amazon and what you get for those bikes. If you bought the Yosuda bike and this was the only bike you ever rode, you'd probably be really happy with it. Honestly, it's not that bad. You can ride this thing, you can get a great workout on this bike, no question about it. However, like I said, as a person who reviews indoor cycling bikes and spends a lot of time on different bikes, I don't think the Yosuda bike is at the top of the list for value. The Yosuda bike is an inexpensive bike and also I feel like it's a bit of a cheap bike as well. So in the $300 to $400 price point range, you have a lot of options. There's the Joroto X2, which is normally $400. It comes with magnetic resistance. The flywheel is nice, the drivetrain feels nice. Also, you have the Sunny bike over there, which can range, you know, in the $300 to $400 range, depending on current pricing. I've seen that uh, Sunny bike over there go for as little as $329 and also, I paid $380 for mine. Back there in the very back is the Proform bike, which I bought from Costco for $385. The Proform bike also has automatic adjusting magnetic resistance. Whereas hopping back over to the Sunny bike, that one has a leather felt pad for resistance, which does feel nicer and it has a much heavier 49 pound flywheel as compared to what they claim is a 35 pound flywheel on the Yosuda. With all that being said, I give the Yosuda a five out of 10 for value. And one other bonus category is how easy is the bike to build? The Yosuda bike is actually very easy to build. Not nearly as difficult as the Schwinn IC4 back there. And uh, you know, really, none of these bikes are really too bad to build, but the Yosuda is pretty easy to build. So adding up all the individual category scores for the Yosuda bike gives it a total grand total tail happy score of 44 out of 100. As comparison, the Gerodo X2 and the Sunny and the Proform bike have all scored higher on the tail happy score. And you know, they are either a little bit more expensive or a little less expensive than the Yosuda. So if you would like to learn more about the Gerodo X2, the Sunny Bike, the Proform, the Peloton, or any of these other bikes, I have lots of other videos on my channel. Check the description box below this video. Also, I have a link to the Yosuda, so you can go check it out on Amazon, check out the specs, look at uh, customer reviews, and see if maybe this is the bike for you. If you did buy the Yosuda bike and it was the only bike you had any experience riding on, you'd probably be really happy with this bike. And hence, that is probably why this is the most popular best-selling bike on Amazon. Is it the best bike for the price on Amazon? That's to be debated. I mean, it does have over 6,000 reviews and it is a lot of good feedback on this bike. 
And the value proposition for the Yosuda bike is pretty good if you take it and compare it to a $2,500 Peloton Bike Plus. I mean, this is a fraction of the price and you can get a great workout on either machine. So perhaps I am being a little bit too critical of the Yosuda bike, but I'm really just kind of expressing my own personal opinions and beliefs. Uh, after spending some time with the Yosuda bike and a lot of other indoor cycling bikes. So that's my final tally score for the Yosuda bike. Browse my channel for other videos about other bikes in the same price range and even bikes, you know, far out of the price range of 300 to 400 bucks. Got the Shuen IC4, got the Peloton bike, lots of bikes. Thanks for watching guys. Give me a thumbs up if this video has been beneficial to you and any questions or comments you have, leave down in the comment section below this video. That's all I have for you today. Thanks for watching. See you in my next video.